Porsche's CEO just did the unthinkable and saved our beloved combustion engines from dying. While the rest of the world is betting big on EVs, Porsche is silently building something that will save ICE engines from dying. With a crazy investment of more than $100 million, Porsche finally managed to engineer a new type of combustion engine with zero emissions and practically half the cost of EVs. Their new e-fuel engine is powerful enough to outperform a V8 while leaving EVs eating its dust with its 1100 mile range, two minute refueling times and zero emissions. CEO Oliver Bloom said Porsche might do well with an electric future, but we do not want to leave our current customers behind. But what exactly is their secretive e-fuel and what's so special about it? Why are brands like Porsche, Jeep and BMW going against the EV revolution? And is this officially the end of EVs? Imagine if you could keep driving a car that runs like those powerful sports cars we all love, but without all that pollution that keeps politicians happy. Porsche just made this a reality. They just made a revolutionary 600 horsepower gas hydrogen engine to save combustion engines from dying. Porsche's CEO Oliver Bloom has issued a brutal warning to car manufacturers, signaling that the race towards the future of mobility will not just be electric. ICE engines still have a long way to go, and Porsche proved this by launching their new petrol hydrogen engine. Porsche, a name synonymous with uncompromised quality, began the conceptualization in 2022, setting its existing gasoline engines as the benchmark, striving to achieve a seamless blend of tradition and transformation. This new engine can reach speeds up to 180 miles per hour and can run on both hydrogen as well as gas. Porsche is also building a whole new fuel, which is designed to work with existing ICE cars like yours and mine and make them emissions free. More on that in a minute. We all know that hydrogen has had its issues. Firstly, it emits dangerous nitrous oxides, and then, we have the challenge of storing hydrogen in a car. Toyota has been trying to fix these problems for decades, but it hasn't been able to succeed. But Porsche, my friends, is no ordinary car maker. Not only did they manage to solve the problems, they were able to take this engine and extend its range to a gigantic 1,100 miles. Porsche has made three main changes. They will use urea-based catalytic reduction found in diesel engines to cut out emissions. And then this engine also has an increased compression ratio along with a revolutionary bespoke turbocharger. And that's not all, folks. Porsche also unveiled a game-changing fuel that will help save the fate of combustion cars. Porsche's got this project called Haru Oni. It's a big deal because it's about making fuel out of nothing but water and air. They announced this back in December 2020, and they were aiming to ship the first batch of e-fuel by January 2023. And they totally nailed it. In fact, Porsche didn't just make this fuel. They tested it in December 2022 by running it in a Porsche 911, a car Porsche never wants to electrify and has special plans for, as I'll tell you about later. Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom says they're ramping up to make 35,000 gallons of this e-fuel each year, and that's just the beginning. They're planning to boost that to a whopping 14 million gallons down the road. Now, how will this new fuel help you? In simple terms, Porsche takes CO2 right out of the air from natural sources like wind or solar energy, and then they split water into hydrogen and oxygen using electrolysis. The hydrogen they get is called green hydrogen because it's made in an eco-friendly way. Then they mix this green hydrogen with the CO2 they captured before, and voila, you've got synthetic fuel. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Porsche isn't flying solo on this. Ferrari's CEO, Benedetto Vigna, is all for it, saying this project is awesome for them because it means they can keep their gas-powered cars and still be eco-friendly. Ferrari's planning to have 80% of their cars be fully electric, but they're saving that precious 20% for the classic internal combustion engines. Companies like Jeep, BMW, and even Toyota are teaming up against EVs and have issued some shocking truth bombs that I'll talk about in a minute. Michael Steiner, the head of the Development and Research Board at Porsche, said, this fuel will offer the owners of existing cars a nearly carbon-neutral alternative. In simple terms, it means we get to keep our combustion engines old and new on the road, but with a much cleaner conscience. Porsche has also partnered with some more companies for this project, like NL Green Power, who is helping with wind power generation, ENAP, which is a Chilean energy company where Porsche has set up their plant due to high and constant wind energy around the year, and Siemens Energy, responsible for plant design. 
Their CEO statement, Porsche is committed to a double E path, E mobility and E fuels, highlights a dual strategy where EVs and synthetic fuels will coexist, supporting the brand's vision for the future of automobiles. Along with Porsche, Jeep CEO Carlos Tavares has also raised questions against the ban of ICE engines. He literally went against EVs and said, EVs are destroying the middle class. Banning combustion engines is an absolutely dogmatic decision. Oliver Zipsa, who is the CEO of BMW, pointed out risks associated with transitioning too quickly from ICE vehicles to battery electric models. He emphasized that a gradual phase out of combustion engines is necessary, arguing that giving up ICEs too soon will push the price of EVs a lot, making them highly unaffordable for the average buyer. And if you thought EVs are a good investment, wait till I tell you about the real resale value of a Tesla just after two years. Spoiler alert, it's not even 50% of the original. Over in Japan, Akio Toyota, the ex-president of Toyota, has questioned the singular focus on EVs. He said, banning ICEs is not the goal. The goal is to lower emissions. Ola Kalanias, CEO of Mercedes-Benz, has acknowledged the higher costs of EV production compared to traditional combustion engine vehicles. He highlighted the ongoing struggle to reduce EV production costs and the challenges that automakers face in making EVs more affordable. These statements reflect a broader industry concern that a rapid and exclusive shift to EVs may present economic and logistical challenges that could impact automakers and consumers alike, particularly the middle class, if not managed care Carefully. The repercussions of going fully electric can be seen in the case of GM and Ford. They mass-produced thousands of EVs, which are now not selling. Both of these companies are selling EVs at a loss of $3,600 and $2,500, respectively. GM is also firing workers to cover up, while Ford is having to stop production of its EV pickup, the F-150 Lightning. This whole crisis completely underscores the importance of having a varied approach towards the future. EVs are not the only answer, and any company who thinks so will eventually fall. Porsche is not putting all its eggs in one basket. By 2030, while aiming to have over 80% of its new cars as all electric, Porsche is also investing in modern combustion engines. Porsche CEO is also against the idea of a fully electric 911 and instead will only ship them with a hybrid setup in the future despite the EU ban. He clearly said 911 will not go fully electric. The heart of the 911, its combustion engine will remain. But this does not mean in any manner that Porsche is bad with EV cars. Despite competing with EV giants like Tesla, Porsche has maintained strong sales figures. Their all-electric Taycan has matched the sales figures of the iconic 911 and is arguably the best EV in its segment. Bloom also said that Porsche cares about its community more than governmental regulations and will not be abandoning its workers either. This statement comes as a positive contrast to other automakers that have announced job cuts. With the shift towards electromobility, Porsche has managed to create new opportunities and 2,000 new jobs at its headquarters, while companies like GM are firing employees every day. Porsche is also cutting down on EV production as we speak, while investing more and more into its gas-powered cars. Volkswagen has encountered significant delays with its Cariad unit, responsible for developing the crucial software architecture for next-generation EVs, including Porsche and Audi models. This delay, now impacting the release of the new Porsche Macan EV and the Audi Q6 e-tron, has been attributed to software challenges that have persisted over the years. They've postponed the release by nearly 18 weeks and their planned SSP platform, which was to serve as the single future backbone for VW's electric vehicles, has also seen a delay. Porsche has been forced to temporarily halt production across multiple plants due to the Russian-Ukraine conflict, which has led to supply chain issues, especially with the sourcing of wire harnesses. This halt in production is not only affecting the Taycan, Porsche's flagship electric model, but also its entire model range. Nearly 80% of the batteries currently used and EVs are shipped from China. Unlike American companies, which focus on quality mineral sourcing without harming the environment, these Chinese suppliers often source materials like lithium and cobalt from mines in Bolivia, where thousands of little children work at minimal wages to make this possible. It's also worth noting that your EVs are only as clean as the electricity you use to charge them, and as of now, nearly 60% of EV suppliers in the States use fossil fuel-based power plants to generate electricity, essentially canceling out the false benefits. And then there's depreciation, which is beyond comprehensible.
If you were to purchase a Tesla for $66,000 in 2021 and sell it now, you will only be able to get $32,000 for it, a near 50% depreciation in just two years. And that's coming from Tesla's official app itself. And let's not even get started on what will happen to the range when your battery begins to degrade over time. By not abandoning the production and development of ICE vehicles, Porsche is safeguarding its position in a market where the demand for luxury vehicles, including those with traditional powertrains, remains robust bust despite broader economic uncertainties. Investing in e-fuels doesn't mean Porsche is abandoning EVs. On the contrary, Porsche plans for half of its vehicles sold to be electric by 2025, but their investment in alternatives underscores their comprehensive approach to sustainability. It's important to remember that the journey to sustainable mobility is not a race with one clear winner. Instead, it's about finding various solutions that can coexist to serve different needs and preferences. Do you like the idea of a completely electric future? Or would you prefer having more options instead? Let me know in the comments below. We just uploaded a video covering groundbreaking news that could hurt the entire EV industry. Check it out if you want to be truly shocked by what's about to happen with EVs.